Hey, Martin. Hey, Steve. Nice to see you again. I guess Likewise. it's only been uh, 22 years. Is it roughly? Yeah, yeah. we should, uh, we should uh, perhaps meet more often. A lot of water has gone under the, the bridge since then. But, um, you know, congratulations. A, a really uh, big move for you today. You've just been uh, announced as the CEO of a really interesting company, Metaswitch. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What was it about MetaSwitch which uh, attracted you to this well, position? First of all, I think it's the, it's the people. The space is very interesting. I mean, network function virtualization and software-driven network overall is happening now. They have some really good customers too. Yeah. So people, products, and customers are really the main things I, I went for here. Well, uh, one of the big announcements recently was AT&T. So you're either lucky or good to be arriving <laughs> just after announcing one of the largest service providers in the world. I mean, that's a huge breakthrough for your company now, isn't it? It is very, very exciting, yeah. very exciting. And it shows you that the the trend that uh, that the sort of the world is moving to Metaswitch in a way that the network functions uh, are being virtualized now. And mm. it's really happening. It's not just hype and it's not the stuff we talked about for yeah. so long. You know, one of the things which I think is interesting about Metaswitch is that it truly is a leader in NFV. It was one of the first movers, yeah. and it was one of the first to have actual uh, product which yeah. could be implemented by yeah. service providers. At the same time, in many ways, it sort of had its thunder stolen uh, by probably 120 or 30 other companies who now have NFV and virtualization all over their website and all over their marketing literature. How do you position MetaSwitch against uh, you know this tsunami of competitors and and how do you differentiate the companies for success in that market? Right. Everywhere you go, there is a there is NFV, there is software defined this and software defined that. Absolutely true, and that's typical for any new market that uh, that are in transition and lots of people come in. The, the MetaSwitch have been at it for a long time and it's architected its solutions from the ground up to do the right things. They're not sort of painting it over with an FV. Mm -hmm. They build it from the ground up. And I think that's a big, big difference. So when people take these products and put them into production networks, when it's based on Metaswitch, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. It's very, very complicated to build these distributed solutions. And when you take a monolithic application and paint it up with an FV and then you put it in and try to scale it, mm. it's going to fall over. Mm. And that's, I think, actually where the differentiation comes from. It's going to come up when people deploy it. Mm. And, and when people talk about NFV working, they mean uh, one of two things uh, beyond just the mechanics of it. They mean it's either going to work by saving them money or it's going to work by allowing them to make more money by being yeah agile by being creative with launching new services right. very quickly. Yeah. What do you think the true strength of NFV is and, and, and when will we see those benefits uh, start to accrue for the majority of service providers? I, I think they come in stages. I think the initial value proposition that people go for is, let's save me some CapEx dollars. Uh, but I think once you, to realize the full benefit is when you can introduce new services, like uh, we saw on, on uh, a little while back in an interview, mm -hmm. I think uh, the AT&T said they could provision 95% faster. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means you call up your service provider and you get this service yeah. you know, within days or hours. Right. That, and then you, you can take that to the next level and say, what additional services can you put on top that adds value to the customers? And then you go from being trying to save money into I can move faster, I can move at cloud speed, yeah. and I can create new things at a much faster pace than I could before, yeah. and really service people better. And then the funny thing is that you're making money in, 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 in a networking environment or in, as a service provider, mm -hmm. you make money when you add value, and I think you can add value faster when you're based it on the virtualized technology. Yeah. So Martin, what's your um, personal vision for Metaswitch, and, and where do you think the company's going to be in five years' time? In five years, I, my personal desire is strong that Metaswitch is not only going to be the leader uh, of virtualization, but also be recognized as the leader, as the, as the, the company that is setting the pace and, and pioneering the adoption of, of software-defined networking. So there's an interesting uh, competitive trend taking place at the moment where you have the telecom incumbents like Alcatel-Lucent and uh, Ericsson coming at the NFE market from one side, and then you have 
um, more disruptive players, but still incumbents in their own space, enterprise, yeah. such as Oracle or VMware, Brocade is a great example, and they're coming at it from the, the other direction. How do, you get, how do you avoid getting squashed between these, these huge companies? Well, I think we have the ability to be very agile. We can innovate and move fast, but we can also be a great partner. Mm. Uh, so these solutions, these large networks needs multiple elements from a lot of different players. And I think our ability to lead the way in some areas mm. and be a great partner in others, I think is going to be very important. And we are of the right scale. We have both the ability to execute and mm. we have the agility that is required here. And I mm. think those are important points. And you don't have the innovators dilemma either where you, you don't have to destroy an existing line of business to move into a new one. Do you think the enterprise uh, giants such as HP and you know, Brocade is a great example as well, where they're really aggressively trying to move into the CSP or service provider market. Do you think they can do that? Do you think they have the right culture? I think it's it's a big open question. Mm. Um, it takes It's a very different market to sell into a service provider than it is to sell into an enterprise. Um, it's a little bit like if you have a bad experience with an enterprise, the enterprise the customer is going to call up somebody else and get them to come in and fix it. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if you have a bad experience uh, with, with a, as a service provider, you, have, you will never ever have a deal again. No. So it, the stakes are much higher. Yeah. It's a much, much longer term relationship that spans decades yeah. that are required. And that mindset is something that is hard to train yeah. an enterprise organization into. But great companies can change and great companies can adopt new ways of doing things. I would not discount anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is also, how about the whole aspect of well, how much hardware is really valuable versus yeah. the software piece? And, and it's hard to train a hardware company to become a software company. Uh, absolutely. So that's it's another dynamic. Yeah, it, it really is. There's a few of them at work, and, and it goes way beyond just pure technology, yeah. which is what we used to talk about. It, right. it is about people. It's about relationships and, and heritage and culture. Well, I think you've done two things recently which, which do that, um, you know, and actually three because a change of leadership always is something which gets attention in our industry because it's a people industry more than a technology industry in my opinion and a relationship industry mm. but also AT&T is a customer and I think the fact that you guys stepped up for this uh, NFE interoperability evaluation which is being run uh, by Light Reading and EA and TC yeah. right now and we're actually the first to commit to that as I said in the column which I ran um, you know a couple of weeks ago when you did that this is actually you know, uh, this is market leadership at work. I mean, yeah. this is what leaders do, they lead. Right. So a lot of kudos to that. Um, you know, what would you say to your new customer base that, you, that you've just acquired now that you've become CEO of Metaswitch? What can they expect from you personally and for the, from the company? Well, first of all, I'm super excited to be part of Metaswitch. It's a company that has a great legacy, that have treated their customers well throughout many years. And I'm deeply committed to continuing that, continuing the relationship and, and being a good, uh, good provider to mm -hmm. them. And then I look forward to meeting with them. Yeah. Of course, I, that's always, again, meeting with the people, understanding where they see us, where we should move, uh, and where, what needs they have that we may not have uh, uncovered yet. Do you see a geo difference in the rate at which people are adopting NFE between Europe and Asia and North America, for example? Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know if there's a, a generic one region is behind and others, but I can, uh, one of the things in my previous life when I was uh, running the switching operations at, at Broadcom, I mm. saw a great deal of interest of, uh, uh, on software-defined networking out of Japan mm -hmm. w in the early 2000s. So that, you know, so there are pockets of where people have been at it for a long time. Yeah. But I think, I, I think AT&T is, is the one of the, the first one that's taken major drastic steps here. Yeah. And, and I think that's very exciting. Cool. You call, uh, Metaswitch is calling itself a network software provider. What does that term mean to you? I think uh, we're trying to say that we're not a hardware mm. box provider. And, and we have to think of the difference between if you're primarily in the business of selling hardware and then you put on NFV terminology on those boxes, it actually is not, it's still not a true realization of the vision and trying to sort of separate between the, 
the, the true software providers and the people that are mostly hardware providers. Mm. And I think that's an important distinction. Over time, people are going to look for that. Is it really a software-driven culture, a software-driven company, mm. or is it a hardware-driven company? And that, I think, is a good distinction yeah, to make. Yeah, and, uh, and another area where I think Metaswitch could do uh, with differentiating itself in yeah. a little bit more strongly, um, yeah. obviously, because it is a differentiator. I mean, this is your first job as a CEO. Uh, are you nervous? Uh, no, I'm oh. excited. Okay. I think it's a wonderful thing. I've run uh, organizations before that of similar scale, but yeah. I really think I love innovation. I like yeah. markets that are in transition, and, and so I'm super excited about yeah. this. And you have uh, something of an engineering background yourself, right? You have 20 patents, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Is that a good preparation for this role, do you think? I think uh, I, I started out as a network uh, engineer, yeah. building network X25 networks and, and modem networks, TDM, stat marks, and so right. forth. That's probably a good starting point for where we're ending I, up. I would agree with that, actually. Yeah. I think you have to serve your time in, down in the right. uh, fundamentals of the network. Network doesn't get much more fundamental than That's the right. next X25 packet switch network so yeah that's true yeah listen congratulations I mean we have a lot of time for Metaswitch it's a very very interesting company and uh, I think your appointment can only be a good thing for them so congratulate congratulations and let's try not to leave it another two decades before we <laughs> catch up again excellent thank, thank you so you. much congratulations thank you